Our Savior has finally arrived with the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Tested by questions and answers since the year 1970, the ending of the moon cycle and the coming of the sun cycle. The master teacher has incarnated on earth to save those who are lost. Find your way to the true light, for the time is at hand. We, the ether people, the Nubians, must come together. We don't need the fake teachers, the false prophets, the lying preachers, the wannabe messiahs and so-called leaders who don't know the way. Where did we come from? How did we get here? And how long must we stay? Who is this evil one that has plagued us for 6,000 years? And when will his time end? Listen to the voice of our Savior as he lifts the spell of Leviathan and restores the power of Elohim in your heart. For you are the children of the Holy Tabernacle, the sons of the Elohim. Find your way to the nearest tabernacle of the Most High and sit and listen to the voice of our Savior, the Lamb who dwells amongst us before it's too late. 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 You are now listening to Rabboni Yeshua Bar El Hadi on Mount Zion, the city of peace. And according to the uh, book of Revelations and everything that was sent down in that particular book and when it talk about the 144,000 and everything that was standing on Mount Zion and then after the year 2000, then what? I mean, what about, what, what, what are we going to be doing? What do we have to do? I mean, are we making plans? That's what you, is that what you mean about that for us? As far as, you know, as far as, uh, you know, the Amorites and all that, you know, all that stuff is predicted because... It's well, nothing, I mean, nothing in prediction changes. Yeah. You follow that? Uh -huh. What you're looking at now is Revelations 21. Uh -huh. Revelations 21 ties right in to Malachi 4. You follow what I'm saying? Malachi The 4. book of Malachi chapter 4 about the oh, incoming okay. of the end of the world. Okay. If you look at the Revelations 21 where they talk about the removal of the sky and the removal of the earth or they say the heavens and the earth is going to be taken away and a new one is going to come in. That's the same thing that took place in Genesis. The old world, right, before Adam and Eve was removed and a new world came in with the birth of Adam and Eve. And then again it happened in Genesis when you get down to the, uh, Prophet Noah and they moved everybody off the planet and they took his seed and replenished the planet again. So there's multiple times where the Almighty steps in and says, I'm going to remove all living things or, or either all creeping things and I'm going to bring in new things. A re, a, what they call a replenishing or a refilling of the earth. Uh -huh. Alright, we're coming back into that cycle right now. Oh, we are. We're coming back into the cycle because, pay attention, because the moon cycle has gone out and the sun cycle is coming in. The moon cycle is a symbol of the night or the shadow hour. And the sun cycle is, is the symbol of the day. We moved into the sun cycle because as the galaxy makes a complete circle, it's called an equinox. And the planet gets closer and further away from the sun at different times in its motion. During the period of time that the sun and the planet are close to each other, those are the periods referred to as the, the solo era. And when it gets farther away from it, you know, it makes it... Yeah, like yeah but it's an egg-like shape. Okay. Right? When it gets further away, that is the moon cycle. That's why moon is synonymous with night and sun is synonymous with day.
So what's happening now amongst the so-called Europeans, the reason why they're building underground tunnels across Europe, the reason why they're taking all the stores off the streets and turning them into malls, the reason why they're putting the cinemas or movies, as you call them, inside malls and hospitals and everything, or underground communications, because he's coming into an era of time that before, in the Holy Quran, as you call it, so the Gav speak about a period of time when they went into the caves, and they don't even know how long they were in the cave sleeping. They were sleepers in the caves. That means that was the other cycle when the sun cycle on the other side came in. Then it goes into a moon, and then it comes into a sun again, then back to the moon. It's two moon cycles and two sun cycles that completes that complete equinox. All right? We're at a period of time now where the sun cycle has come in, the ozone layer is moving, there's a greenhouse effect, the planet is warming up, and the European people have to get off the surface of the planet. They have to go underground. And they're trying to build everything. First, they tried to go out. They found out that life existed on Mars, but they couldn't exist there because of certain ammonia that, that they would make it impossible for them to survive. So now they're back to building underground. They linked up Europe. They had to get a one world system so that all Europeans would be in tune because those that are not in tune will die. Yeah. And it's the same thing, like I explained many times, that Hagar used when she went in the wilderness. She said El Roy, which was enough but saying I'm El Ra. Oh, yeah. She didn't say Amon because Amon was a certain people that she didn't belong to. It's another story. All right, so the promise is being fulfilled for us that the time for the devil is ending. Mm -hmm. The fire is pouring down out of the sky. Uh -huh. It's happening now. It's happening to them right now. Yeah. It's giving them skin cancer. Uh -huh. Each year they're told you can't go to the beaches. They love beaches. Beaches are a symbol of nudity to them. Mm -hmm. And the word nude is short for Nod, the land of Nod. Okay. Then Hebrew, we don't say Nod, we say nude. Mm -hmm. Now they're pushing for nudity beaches. And it's amazing because they're pushing for nudity beaches, but they can't go to the beach. So they must be pushing for newly beaches for you and I. Because it says, oh children of Adam, don't let the devil seduce you and take off your clothes. Uh -huh. So he can't be making newly beaches for Europeans because they can't go to the beach. Uh -huh. No more. They're telling them, stay off the beaches. Where they're not getting burnt, they're poisoned in the water. Uh -huh. There's fires all across the country. Floods all across the country. All this is done by the Illuminati. They're trying to destroy the surface of the planet so that we will have to go underground with them. Do you understand that? They're at a point now where well, we don't they have to go. Do we? I mean, we're not going to go. It depends. It depends on if <laughs> well, you. It depends on if you're prepared or not. Okay. You've got to be prepared because, because of how close the sun becomes to the planet Earth, it will not have any effect on us. I mean, but do we have to prepare ourselves just as in individuals? Like no, we have to prepare ourselves as a body. As that is our body. problem. We keep on breaking up into individuals uh -huh. and divided. We have no power. We're the only people that disunited amongst ourselves. Yeah. We get broken down all the way down into Jehovah Witnesses and Seventh Day Avengers and Sunni Muslims and Ansars. We're broken up into all kinds of little stupid splinter groups. There's Egyptologists over here, Dr. Ben is on this side, and Clark is on this side, and 
and Siraj Wahaj is over here, and Muhammad al-Amin is in al and, and Farrakhan is over here, and Warfji is over here, and that's just in the Islamic world. Then when you get into the Hebrew world, you got Ben Amin Kata, Yahweh Ben Yahweh over here, Rabbi Jeremiah over here, Rabbi Matthews over here, and that's in the black so-called Jewish section. Mm -hmm. Then when you get into Christianity, you got Seventh-day Adventists, Pentecostals, Episcopalians, Protestants, Baptists, Lutherans, Catholics, and all of this has been set up to divide us in mind. Because the power of us coming together mentally can affect the world. The whole thing is to keep us divided in mind, right? Because of this day and time. The devil's time is at its expiration date. Mm -hmm. It's fulfilling his prophecy. It's 6,000 years that's coming to an end. Mm -hmm. Now, what he has to do is get off of the surface of the planet. If you would just be patient, mm -hmm. he'll have to leave. He can't reverse the greenhouse effect. Mm -hmm. He cannot push the sun away. He cannot reverse the destruction of the ozone layer. He can't stop that. It's not bothering you. He's convincing you that it's bothering you. <laughs> He's trying to tell you, you better not go to the beach, because if you go to the beach, you're going to get skin cancer. What's wrong with you? You was born on the beach. <laughs> what do you think Ethiopia is? What do you think Sudan is? 130, 110, 115 degrees all year round. You follow that? So we are waiting. I am waiting for the sun. I raise my hands to Amun Ra and say, come closer to the earth. Because the closer he gets, the faster he gets, the quicker they have to go underground. And what they're trying to do now is they're trying to destroy the surface of the planet. So they're poisoning the water so we'll have no fish. They're burning all the forests so all the livestock is gone. They corrupted all the farmland. And then they are destroying all the countries that oppose them where we might take refuge. You follow that? All the Middle East is being wiped out. All of Sudan, Ethiopia, Somali. Don't fall for that Somali lift. That Somali lift was a result of the fact that they looked on television and saw them camps in Russia and they saw them Amorites starving over there. So they had to get food over there. And one day it took them to close all them camps in Russia and bring food. And because the public's eye was on it, they sent a couple of bags of being the Ethiopia sort of looked like a balance for the, for the UN. In actuality, they're not least concerned. Part of the plot is to destroy all of what's called Africa, Africa. Either by AIDS, famine, you follow diseases, they're going to wipe it out. Because they have to go, like the Quran sort, back in the caves. You follow that? They have no choice. They build these high rises and these condominiums. All of the so-called Europeans who live on the southern part of this country are now moving north. So they're going to eventually leave out of South Africa? They have to. They have to leave out of South Africa, but it's going to be in a, such a bad state, there's nothing we can do with it anyway. They gave the land to these Amorites. Mm -hmm. They didn't have to. So they could have taken it, and they didn't have to leave Nelson Mandela in jail for 26 years. So they wanted him in there until they lobotomized him and used him as a tool. But let me get back to where we at. People ask me all the time about South Africa. I'm not in South Africa. We're right here and we got problems. And we better get straight. We better start worrying about what's happening with us here. And we're running out of time and they're making more demands. The reason why you see them trying to renovate your neighborhoods and buy up your neighborhoods is because they have to get out of the South. You understand that? They got to leave Georgia. They got to leave Florida. They got to leave South Carolina. And they'll have to live from an upper part of North Carolina up where the weather is controllable until they can go underground. So now you drive all up in these mountains and all you see is Florida plates. And all old, old Jews walking around up here. Because they're trying to find places up here, up in Canada. That's their refuge. So as many times as they tried to put a community in Canada, they couldn't get it established. We have a problem with Syracuse, with Buffalo, all up there. And it dawned on me because we have to get out of here and go south. Why do we have to go south? And why do we have to go to an area south where it's open and not mountainous? Because that's where he can't come. He cannot chase you where he cannot go. You follow that? So as long as we're up in a mountain area, he can come up here. But when we get down in an area where it's flat and open plains and the temperatures range in the hundreds, we don't have to worry about him coming down there because as the sun gets closer, he will not be able to survive. It would be suicide for him to pursue us in an environment where nature is fighting against him. You understand what I'm trying to say? This is the day and time we are now for the people to say, why are we leaving Mount Zion and going south? Because we're passing him on the road. 
Yes, sir. <laughs> and let the fools come this way, and we'll go that way where he can't come. But we're going to have to learn how to survive down there. Yeah. Because you forgot how to be sun people. And that's one of the main reasons why I said stop the perms and the jerry curls and all that crap because you can't afford it and you won't have access to it. Uh -huh. Do you follow what I'm trying to say? Yeah. And, I, and I didn't say go back to Afro because Afro described one hairstyle. <laughs> one hairstyle. And I, I heard somebody say just yesterday, if they were to bring that hairstyle up to today, instead of us being called Afro-Americans, we would have to be called Jerry Curl Americans, or Extension Americans, or, or, per, or Perm Americans, because Afro is just a hairstyle, and the word Afro don't apply to us. We are not Africans. And I say that to say, nobody is African. There is no such thing as an African. The word African means Ifriqiya, to divide us up into pieces. We are Ethiopians. We are Egyptians, we are Kushites, Hamites, Shemites, we are not Africans. You follow that? We have broken up into families, became known as Ashante, we became known as Mendingans, we, became, we, we got set up with Igbo, we became many different names. But when you get past all those tribal names and get down to it, we are the Shemites and not Semites. They're, they could be Semi, they could be Semites, we're Shemites. You follow? So we have to prepare ourselves for this hour in time, and the sun is on our side. Nature is on your side. But he is destroying the planet intentionally with all kind of earthquakes and, right now if you look on the news, there's fires in Florida, there's fires in California, there's fire. He's burning up all the forests. When you burn the forests, you're chasing the animals. If he's burning the forests down there, which direction is he chasing the animals? If he's poisoning all the waters on the sea coast of Florida, where is he chasing all the fish? Now why would he chase the fish and the animals up here? Huh? Because he's going to be living up here. <laughs> so the best way for me to chase you is to light a fire. I light a fire on this side, I can guarantee that whatever's on that side is going to run in that direction. So if you monitor them fires, them fires start off the coast of Florida and they're moving all up. Now they're talking about South Carolina, all on the coast of South Carolina. They can't get inland. So what you do is go inland. Stay off the coast. You follow that? And all the animals will run inland and north. And there you'll set up your colonies for survival. Your father? Yeah. Would it be um, uh, planting food and stuff like that? Or starve. <laughs> <laughs> One or the other. Won't be no AMP. <laughs> it won't be no AMP, right? Not for us. And that's why I'm moving. Yeah, well, my name is Tahida. And is there a red equivalent for that name? For Tahida? Not like that. You know, that the word Ahad, right? Ahad and Ahada is the same as Ahad, right? And Tawheed, but see, Tawheed is a created word. The reason why I say it's a created word because it's used in Islam, and Islam claims to come out of the Quran, correct? That when Muhammad received the Quran, that's when they formulated the system of Islamic teaching and they corrected this divine language in which this scripture was sent down. You follow me? However, the name Tawheed is nowhere in the Quran, which meant that after the Quran was completed, then men looked in the Quran when they were setting up grammars and stuff and created words from words. Mm -hmm. So in Arabic language, yeah, Tawheed is a word, but it's not a Quranic word. It's a word that they've made from the word Wahid. Yeah. You follow? Yeah. I would like to ask you a question. Uh, the importance of coming into the tabernacle, um, those that want to come in, and were rejected because of medical reasons. I don't, I don't, I'm not speaking about some patients What happens to those people? I can't speak for those people because that's the day and time we're in. We're in a strange day and time. And that is that we have evoluted ourselves from pure mental, right? We had a perfect ether and a bashar. We have, been, we have evoluted into some new being. And I don't mean new being, I mean some new kind of being that's not in tune with the original self. You know, we're radical, we're unpredictable, we think a lot like the enemy. Yeah. We're self-destructive, we're uncooperative, and up in the most, we're disagreeable. So we have subject ourselves to a lot of stuff that has changed us. So it's hard to look in the eyes of a Nubian person and know what you're looking at now. You follow? Um, yeah, shalom. Shalom. I'm a part of the Kushite Coptic Hebrew, and we wrote you several letters 
And we, had to, we didn't hear any response, so we read in your bulletin what you did right. And we would like to know, well, why didn't we hear any response to you first? So many people are trying to match what I'm teaching, not necessarily you. And oftentimes, they really would like to know what they're talking about, but they don't. You know, they say, I'm fluent and I'm hot. And they make a statement like, Hala Selassie means this. And I look and say, that's not what it means in Amharic. It might mean something in modern translation that has eased its way into Ethiopia today, but that's not what it means in ancient Gizek. Or they'll say, in the scripture, this person is this, and that's not who that person is. They're reading English translations or Amharic translations from English. So understand, the devil has ran way up ahead of y'all in, in the early 19th century, the 1910, 11, and 12, and started translating all the scriptures into French out of a, a land in French called Bukhara and then translated from that into Arabic. So the Arabic Bibles you got are originally translated from French, not from the original. The Amharic Bibles you're getting are not from, and Hala Selassie and people like himself were sellouts to Ethiopia. They were not for Ethiopia. He was a sellout. He was a Christian, a Coptic Christian. You cannot be a Christian and be of the pure seed of the house of Judah. You can only be of the pure seed of the house of Judah. And you can read it. If you read the book of the prophet, who they call him a prophet, they call say Nubia in Hebrew, and it means a prophesier as opposed to a Niba, which is a prophet, and it's called Melachi. Melachi means in Hebrew, my angel, they say messenger, because they don't want to translate that. If you read that, you'll see how they address false Kohan, they call them false priests, people who are perverting the law, who don't keep the sacrifices, and don't know how to do this, and don't know how to do that. It's only four chapters, but it's the last of the 12, they have, they have the 12 of the 21. In the, in the Tanakh, 12 of the 21, which is supposed to be the 12 minor prophets. And the 12 minor prophets, they are there to explain to us where errors went wrong. And the last one, the most powerful, is Melech. And he predicts all the future events. Certain people would love for, uh, let's say, Elijah Muhammad to be Elijah. Other people would love for Haile Selassie to be the Lion of Judah. There just wasn't it. They never did anything that rendered them it. Their congregations are desperate for a person to hug, so they create an aura around a person that I met Hala Selassie personally. Right? He, he doesn't see, he never saw himself as Jesus. And of course, we could say after that, well, of course, Jesus would say he's not Jesus. Then if we say, you know, if I say to you, are you Jesus? You say no. I say, okay, only Jesus would say he's not Jesus. Then I say, well, okay, then, then I am Jesus. Then you say, I told you he's Jesus. Hala Selassie never subscribed to Jesus. Hala Selassie was educated in France. He was not a direct descendant from Solomon. And if he was a direct descendant of Solomon, which I'm pointing out in that bulletin, it's still not good enough for us because they, his father and him both married Hittite women. They married the cursed seed of the canon, of which Abraham, who was our father, and the shield falls under Abraham, not David. That's another thing I read. They mentioned the shield of David. Morgan Dawid is not Morgan Abraham. If you look in the 15th chapter in the first birth, Barashit, when they refer to as Genesis, the shield is Abraham's shield. That is the star we wear. The shield of, it's called Morgan Abraham. I, and he says, the Lord said, I am your shield, Abraham. They're following a different star, interlock star, which is a symbol of Satan. It has nothing to do with the star that we're found. So what it is, is I addressed it like I read the pamphlets, I looked at them, I saw pictures from our books in it, I saw information, what was wrong on Hala Selassie, so I said, I'm writing a book about Hala Selassie anyway. Not so much about Hala Selassie as the character, but as one of the characters in our Ethiopian life, because we are the original Ethiopian people. Sudanese are Ethiopians, whether they want to accept it or not. And Ethiopians are Kushites, and Kushites all come under Ham and Shem, right, which are the sons of Nah. So what I did is I addressed it subtly, instead of opening like I usually do. What I usually do when someone writes me and says, you're wrong, you think you know what you're talking about, then I usually go, so you want to play games? And I write a whole book about them. <laughs> That's my way of saying, don't play with me. I'm not the same thing you are. I'm not some person who just pops up with a little information, you know, and, going to, and is trying to get a congregation. I'm, I say that to the five percenters. I say that to Farrakhan. I say that to the Sunni Muslims. This is a different level of information that we're coming from. And so what happened is I addressed it subtly the same way I did when the Sunnis first wrote about me. I put out a couple of little leaflets and then I said, you understand what I can do and I left it alone. And then they came back with a cult book and I said, okay, so you want to fight. I don't want to fight because this is going to be Kushite on Kushite, but being you want to play, let's dance. And, you know what I'm saying? I'm, but the time I wasted, you know, researching the Quran and showing them their errors, I could have spent raising the nation, 
And then I got sidetracked because I was on a Jesus Christ mission at the time, writing a series of books about how, who is Jesus' father. And I was, you know, trying to get that spell of the ghost, the gospel, the ghost spell out of our heads. And I got sidetracked by my own people. And I got there, when I got there, I met the five percenters, and then I got sidetracked by the five percenters. And I'm like, back on mainstream. And I said, is this another, when I got this stuff, I said, is this gonna be another sidetrack? I'm gonna have to stand here and badger more of my own people. So I just passed it. Let me just write about it, right? And left it on. I have a whole book on Ethiopia and the history of the line of descendancy of Judah, where they went, who they are, documented facts, not hypothetics. Shua was a land. He was not from Shua. He migrated to Shur. He was raised in a Gorah, another whole province in Ethiopia. Moved there, and the land was established by a descendant, and it wasn't Menelik. It's a whole big thing that they play games with people. When he went to Jamaica, for instance, he didn't even he didn't respect the Rastafarians. He was very disrespectful. Other slides, he did not acknowledge their presence at all. He visited the uh, temple because he was forced to but he didn't respect them. In Ethiopia, he was overthrowing the country. He brought Christianity into Ethiopia. The man who ruled Ethiopia before him was a Muslim. But he was not a Muslim, so they say Muslim, and they try to make it sound like he was an Arab Muslim. He was not. He was a Sudanese Muslim who believed in the Torah and lived like we do as Islamic Hebrews. But they, they eliminated him to put Hala Selassie in so that they could bring Christianity in. Because, and I'll tell you why. Because they're trying to find the Ark of the Covenant. This is what they want to get their hands on. They made a movie about it. Raiders of the Lost Ark because they know the power of the cherubim that El Elo Yahweh channels. He controls both Elohims. The Elohims that are good and the Elohims that are bad, which they don't say good and bad in Hebrew. We use the word Tov and Ra, which is agreeable and disagreeable. Those disagreeable and agreeable Elohims. And the disagreeable ones are the ones that have the wings symbolic. Right? They protect the Ark of the Covenant that we as Ben Yisrael. When he said Ben Yisrael, you're including Ishmaelites. Ishmaelites, Muslims may think they're in another religion, but they're nothing but a 5% branch off from Israel. We are Ishmaelites. We are Midianites. We are just, we are Jacob's sons. But Esau is also us, so the Edomites are us. But they laid their mountains to waste because they maliciously went out and married Hittites. Maliciously, Yitzhak or Esau went out to marry Hittite women to get even because he lost the blessing. There's no such word as birthright in the Torah. It's not in there. The word is blessing, the word is buroka, and it means the blessing. And that blessing was money. This is what the problem was. It wasn't about nothing spiritual. It was about money. And when Jacob got the money, Yitzhak was mad and went back to his father and said, could you give me a little money? <laughs> That's the Hebrew understanding from Aramic. But in the Christian Bible, you're going to get lost because they don't know what they're talking about. Yeah, bro. Yes, so that's, that's why we came here. Yes. We came here because so, I want to get together with you and put out some stuff to a lot of the Rastafarians because I, I bear witness to your doctrine and anxiety. So it wasn't a matter of we're trying to fight off your doctrine. We're trying to work together. We're trying to hook up because um, some of the same things you're talking about now about <coughs> Ethiopia, about the sun, and, and even etymology. The nine ether. Yeah, nine ether, <coughs> number nine also, we've been saying for a long time. The Wapo, you know about the Wapo and all those? Yeah, yeah. Those are the ancient, ancient scientists. I just heard a tape about the um, Beni Elohim, uh, um, the Elohim. You are, you are Elohim, believe it. Mm -hmm. And the Elohim that sits here are both good and <laughs> bad, or bad. simply agreeable <laughs> and disagreeable. <laughs> That's us. You know what I'm saying? And he is L. L is the Elohim is the plural of it. You see that? L, Elohim. You are. That's why Yeshua said, is it not written in your law? I said, I, he was saying, but notice he said, is it not written in your law? Because he was taking him back to Tiflin. The Tiflin is called, which you refer to as the Psalms. The Psalms. And what they would do, let me just want to finish, they would sing a song. The whole congregation would sing. And this will also address this young lady's question. They would sing the song of praise, and at the end of the song, they would say, Salat. <laughs> they, so that's true, but they'd say Salat. Salat in Hebrew is said, Sali. Sad, Lamb, Lamet, and Hay. That's the Sali you see. That's like in Muslim saying, coming to Salat. Salat, Saad, Lamb, Alif, Tamabuta in Hebrew is Saad. <laughs> you follow that? Lamet and Hay. You ever notice that at the end of certain prayers it says Saad, which meant now it's time to get up to pray. 
And when they got up and prayed, they raised their hand towards the sky. You can see this amongst the Falashians today, in Habashia. Raise your hands towards the sky like you'll find on the walls in Mitzrayim, in Egypt. We raise our hands. What we did in ancient Egypt and what we did in Ethiopia and what we did in Sudan was the same. We didn't start looking down at fire until we got infiltrated by pale Arabs. And they taught us to stop looking towards Ra and start looking down at the ground. Everything, listen to this, everything that you know of that is healthy grows this way. Grows towards the sun. Not this way. You understand what I'm saying? So they, this was a major, a major plot to remove one spell, Christianity, and reinstill another spell, Islamic. And it wasn't the real Muslim teachers, because the real Muslim teachers, they held their hands up. Somewhere along the line, people got in and they institutionalized Salat. And I said, let's go back to the Quran for what it's worth, El's Quran, and look and see in it what he says. And eliminate all the things that we're doing that he does not say. And when you do that, you eliminate looking down, because it's not in there. There's no place in the Quran where it says, put your hands on your heart and put your face down. My descendants did it, and they passed it on to me. And in your birth, you, it was passed on to you. You follow that? So that was step one. Right? Now we're moving on further to no longer worshiping, but becoming that which was worshipped. I'll put it clearer. And I'm not saying L. Don't fool yourself unless you can create a gnat. <laughs> All right, and if you get, until you get to that level, I'm just saying, we, but we have to become who we really are. And that makes us responsible for the universe, because that's what we were created to be, caretakers. Do you hear me? And somewhere along the line, something got removed from us. It got removed in Genesis. If you look at the fourth chapter and the 26th verse, you'll see where it says, and the Almighty gave, Adam and Eve, another son, to replace the other one, like and in the image and after the likeness of Adam. This son, Seth, was not in the image and after the likeness of Elohim, the angelic beings responsible for the replenishing of the earth. Read it again. It says, in the image and after the likeness of Adam. What state was Adam in in the fourth chapter, which is after the third chapter? Was he in a positive state or had he sinned? You see that? So Seth's seed, meaning most of you, right, were descendants from, at, like Adam, who had sinned. Now I talk simple, plain common sense. When you take a little baby, okay, whether it's black, white, or purple, do you have to teach that baby evil, or do they naturally take from other kids? Are they naturally possessors? You follow that? Do you realize that when your baby is hugging you and mooring on your hand and you're fascinated that what the baby's really trying to do is eat you? <laughs> do you know that? You think that when your baby's mooring on your hand, that's cute. Your baby is really trying to eat you. It doesn't know that you're not food. A baby will reject you and you can say, here's a cookie and a baby will come. That's a certain part of our nature. That same nature that got, took us to the tree. Adam's seed was not good. Howard's seed was good. You follow that? Adam's name, originally, Adam's name. Not Adam. Adam's name. Because it said, and call their name Adama. The word Adama means of the dust of the ground. But in that same Torah, they give you the name of Adam and Eve when they say male and female created he them and call their names Adam. Now what is the name then? When they use the word male, the same thing happens in El's Quran. They say, Zakar wa Antar. We created you male and female. Zakar wa Antar. However, the word Zakar, Zakara, has nothing to do with being a male or female or gender. It has to do with the word to remember, Zikr. You follow that? In the Torah, it says, male and female created he them, and called their names Adam. Zakar wa Nakibu was their names. When you trace the Nakibu back to ancient Aramic, it means leadership and out front in power. And Nakibu was the female, not the male. Then 
Zachar was Adam's name. Adam doesn't mean that's his name. Adam means of the ground, a earth being, as opposed to a Elohim being. There was Elohim of heaven and Elohims on earth, physical ones and spiritual ones. If you want to see it, again, in the book of Malachi, right in the fourth chapter of it, they call them the Almighty God. Before all, they say God lead. And if you cut back to your Aramic, you see they have in there Elohim al Bashar. Right? Elohim in the flesh. Now, so you had Adam's seed, who's an Elohim, and you have Nakibu, who you call Hawa. And the reason why they call her Hawa or Haya, because it meant wind. You follow that? It meant the breath, the Nachas, that breathed into a person. And the reason why they say that woman comes out of man is because man decides the gender of the child. Whether it's an XY chromosome, not that somebody snap nobody's rib, rip their chest open, that's not what's in there. <laughs> You're talking about a replenishing of the world, not a creation of the world. Adam and Eve were not the first people on the planet for us. You understand that? I'll give you some simple reasons why. One is, we, we use a basic biblical concept. We have Cain, Abel, Adam, and Eve. Is that the basic Christian concept? How many people was that? Four people. Cain kills Abel. He eliminates one of the people. How many people are left? Three. Who are these people? Adam, Eve, Right? Adam, Eve, and Cain. Three people. Right? Now, when the Almighty addresses Cain concerning the killing of his brother, Cain cried that his penalty is greater than he could bear, right? And then he said he put a mark on him, right? A birthmark, exactly what it is. A birthmark on him. That what? What was what was Cain afraid of? Tell me. Anybody what? Cain was afraid that if anybody finding him will kill him. Could you tell me who was going to find him if there's only three people on the planet? Who was he afraid of if there was nobody else on the planet but him, his mother and father? It wasn't his father he was worrying about. It wasn't his mother he was worried about. There must have been other people on the planet that he was worried about that would kill him. And when he left that land and went into the land of Nud, Nod, he encountered other people. There, it was already there, Nephilians. Then again they say, the man should leave his mother and his father and cling unto his wife and they should become one flesh. Correct? If these are the first people on the planet, who was that law for before it was said to them? It didn't say you are to leave your mother and father. It said a man as if the law was already set. A man is to leave his mother and leave his father and cling unto his wife and there to become one flesh. If that law was set, who was it set for if there was nobody there? And nobody else got married. You follow? And why is the word refill or replenish? Because in Hebrew or Aramic, the word is barra. They don't use the word halakha. Yes, there is a Hebrew word halakha, meaning creation, and it talks about the original creation that took place billions of years ago. But Adam and Eve, 49,000 years ago, was a recreation, a barra. And look it up in Hebrew. You see right there, barra. And that means to remake, to remodel, or to rebuild, not to create. We will continue following this brief intermission. Have you ever wondered why so many Nubians or black people seem to aid the devil in destroying us? Have you ever wondered why they sell the drugs and they pull the trigger? And the black cops may beat you worse than a white cop. And the black leader maid will chase you down while the white leader maid may let you go. Or the minister would lie and say anything. Have you ever wondered why this is so easy to them? then you must read a book called Are There Black Devils? 
for in the midst of us, living with us, marrying us, teaching us, preaching to us, are black devils who were here before the creation, the gravitation of the pale devil. Read the book, Are There Black Devils? A must for anyone who wants to know the truth. It's available at your nearest Tents of Abraham. To order, write to the Tents of Abraham, Post Office Box 50547, Atlanta, Georgia, 30302. the Kohen priest. This was a sacred plate that can be found in the book of Exodus. Read about the breastplate in Revelation chapter 21 verses 18 through 20. Read where the priest wore the breastplate. This is not merely a piece of jewelry or an ornament. This is a sacred relic. Read in Exodus chapter 28 verse 15. For well, you are the original priest of the ancient house of Israel, where your breastplate, it's a talisman against evil. In 14 karat gold, for male, $475, female, $275. To order, write to the Tents of Abraham, Post Office Box, 50547, Atlanta, Georgia, 30302. Now we will continue with Rabboni Yeshua Bar Al Hadi on Mount Zion. And what was taking place then? The planet had got so corrupted amongst the Elohims. And when you look up Elohims or heavenly hosts, you see that they say heavenly host for Elohim, for angelic beings. You follow that? So if the Elohim were beings who came to this planet from somewhere else, I'm saying somewhere else so I don't get distracted by UFO conversation, <laughs> right? Came to this planet from somewhere else, and they lived on this planet, and they called them giants. It's, in, it's right in the Bible. Giants were in the earth in those days, right? And Adam and Eve encountered living and dealing with these beings. These people must have had laws. Adam or Eve, one of them had to be living by those laws to know the laws. Who was he talking to? Adam or Eve, when he spoke about that. A man, the law is that a man should be talking to Adam. You would like to believe that Adam was a good person. Adam was seven feet because he was a Nephilim and an Akite. His family had mixed in. They were part of the people called Path. Path are the original people of the planet Earth Pygmies. Two people existed at the time that you identified. One lived over near the two rivers called Nile, or Nile, and others lived over near the two rivers called Tigris and Euphrates. You understand? And both of these rivers were fed from the Mediterranean. The only difference is when you look at the map today, you have a problem. You're trying to figure out how the water ran down the Nile this way and up the Euphrates this way. Correct? It ran through Greece and down through Babylon. How? Because it was before the planet was tilted off its axis. See, your planet has now been tilted on a 23 degree axis. So where Tigris would have been here, and then now it would have ran there, down above, beneath the Mediterranean, now it's sitting like this, so it looks like it's impossible. So when you go to a map, you can't see those four rivers that's flowing down, and you get confused. But if you go back to before the planet got shifted off its axis, you'll see how the... You follow? So this part is on the eastern end of the garden, obviously. And where would that be at? That's in the Persian Gulf. 
that's in an area called Or, which means flames in Aramaic or Hebrew. Or means flames. The city of Nod was in the midst of the flames. And what is flames called? What do you know flames as? As hell. You understand? Flames is hell. And there is where the giants, the wicked beings, live. And it's said in when you get to Battle in the sixth chapter that the sons of God, the first one, those are not positive Elohim, those are negative Elohim, disagreeable. They took the daughters of men. You see the difference? The second time it says they went in unto. But the first time it says they took. That means they left the Euphrates area and went over into Egypt. Where we lived at, the pygmies, you follow that? We, were, that's, we didn't stand over four feet at the time. And the giants who came down stood over seven feet. The normal height of a man, whether you like it or not, is five foot six inches. I'm not five foot six, so that's the only thing I'm saying because it's me. It's a perfect balance between the Elohim on that side and the Elohim on that side because we created him in our image. And if they're seven feet and they're four feet, the middle image would be five six. <laughs> you follow? Sure, man. So now these wicked beings left their land and went over into Egypt called Mithraim. Today called Gen back then Garden, and took women from all that they chose. You follow that? And that family that they chose that ended up on their side is where Adam, who was a descendant from the original people, that's why when you see the picture of Adam, he has wavy hair. He doesn't have nine ether. He has eight Isa. There's nine, eight, seven, and six Isa in our hair. Another question that comes up. How did the people or Eve become light skinned? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's because you want to convince yourself because you're dark skinned that the first people were dark skinned. It's very convenient. <laughs> But genetically, that's just not true. Because two dark-skinned people can give birth to a brown-skinned person. And it'll stay within a certain color range from Latino all the way down. When you get to the point where the skin is ghost-like, it's non-ether, it's ghost-like, it's transparent, then you've bred out of the Ethiopian people, the nine ether. Adam's family were Pathites. Of, of, that's the same path you read about in ancient Egypt, right, who influenced Amun Ra, mixed in, was kidnapped, taken over there to live in that land, thus Abraham's family is born out of all Chaldea, not being born in Ethiopia where they belonged, and Adam himself was a mixture. He was a giant. He was seven feet tall to the original Pathites of ancient Egypt. You understand? So he was influenced by good or bad or what should we say, agreeable or... He was influenced by a disagreeable people. Did, did Nahas, Nahas is a Torah word for the whisperer. There's no word serpent in there. It's Nahas. One of his names is Thabun. That's one of his ancient names. It means a snake. His real name is Samuel. Samuel, that was his name. But who did he go to? Huh? He went to Eve. He did not go to Adam. Why didn't the devil go to Adam? Oh, he's already there. <laughs> he knew Adam. He knew Adam. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. Shouldn't it have been that he should have went to Adam and let Adam influence Eve as opposed to going to Eve and let Eve him No, because Eve was of the original Pathites of ancient Ethiopia and was good. Adam's family had been living over at the Euphrates and had become influenced by evil. So the whole purpose of the breeding, or as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad spoke about, the graftation and the black and the brown seed, which is how and Adam, you see, was to breed the evil out of us and make us back into the image of the Elohim so you'd have contact like you used to directly with the universe through the dog star. You heard the dog, dog star before? Yeah. What is it called? Osiris. What is it called in Mitraim? Anubis. Uh. The jackal, the dog. You understand? Uh. The god of death. 
the God of life. That's our representation of black jackal to them. To worship Amorite when he's worshiping God, and God, like I said before many times, in dyslexia, his dog, he's talking about the God Anubis of ancient Egypt, which represented us. Do you understand? Not the jackal of the cave that he encountered when he had to go into the cave when the last sun cycle came through and the moon cycle went out. He was asking, why did Canaan go up into the cave? Because the sun cycle came in and the people of Nuwapu, the sun people come to power. And the night people, and let me give you some names for it. Dracula. <laughs> When you look in the New Testament, as it's called, in their Greek translations, the word for serpent is drag with a K, eon. Drag eon. And they say dragon. The name Dracula is from a German origin and it's dra eon. <laughs> Dracula is a symbol of a being that cannot stay under the sun. He roams by night and he needs fresh blood because he is a hemophiliac. A hemophiliac is a being that lacks hemoglobin in the blood and does not have the power to produce clotting factors. You with me? Dracula wears a long black cloak symbol of the night. <laughs> Dracula has to go into a sarcophagus or a sepulcher or a coffin in modern day. In ancient times there were no coffins. People would put inside caves and he has to have the natural soil under it. You follow that? Mm -hmm. So they unite in Europe. And they build underground tunnels in Europe. Does anybody know about all the underground tunnels that's being built in Europe? Dracula is aware that the sun cycle is coming in, so evening and morning is passing for a seventh day. Meaning, we had the 6,000 years, <laughs> and let's read it the way you see it. We had a 6,000 year period, correct? Now, after 6,000 comes in, Seven. So if his time is up in the year 2000, which is the year 6000 from canon, that ends another day. And how does the scripture usually say? Evening and morning was the... Now let's go into the seventh day because everybody desisted on the last seventh day. <coughs> and they called it Shabbat. Right? Now we're coming into the seventh day. A new horizon. The sun is getting closer to the planet. Dracula has to get back in his coffin <laughs> or the sun will burn him up. It's just called, in modern day, skin cancer. <laughs> Nubian people, stop wrestling with the devil. You already have the blessing. All you have to do is wait. All you have to do is be a supper. <laughs> Patient. <laughs>
Atlanta, Georgia. 30.